What if I told you that ancient scriptures predict a series of events that could unfold the very fabric of our reality? This enigmatic concept, known as the end times, emerges from the biblical prophecies that have both mystified and divided thinkers and theologians across the ages. The end times, according to the Bible, is not just a story, but a profound series of future events said to precede the ultimate destiny of the world. These events range from cataclysmic upheavals to the final judgment of humanity. The fascination with these prophecies isn't just about their dramatic nature. It's about their implications on faith, morality, and the future of human existence. Today, we embark on a journey through these prophetic times as laid out in the sacred texts. We'll explore a chronological breakdown, piecing together the prophecy puzzle one event at a time. Stay with us as we unravel the timeline that has intrigued scholars and believers alike for centuries. Imagine a charismatic leader rising, one who promises peace but harbors chaos. This figure, known as the Antichrist, is a central figure in the end times prophecy, a narrative deeply woven into the fabric of biblical eschatology. The Antichrist emerges as a beacon of hope initially, captivating nations with his eloquence and seemingly benevolent intentions. His rise to power is meteoric, marked by persuasive rhetoric that appeals to the universal desire for peace and stability. However, beneath this veneer lies a master of deception, skilled in the art of manipulation. Craftily, he consolidates power, using diplomatic prowess to forge alliances, while secretly undermining the very fabric of moral and ethical principles. His true nature is that of a wolf in sheep's clothing, orchestrating events that would lead to global domination under his rule. This leader's ascent marks the beginning of a perilous phase in human history, setting the groundwork for a series of prophesied events that would challenge the very essence of faith and morality. With the stage set by such a deceptive figure, the world would be primed for turmoil. Now the earth trembles under the weight of tribulation, a time of unparalleled suffering. As foretold in the book of Revelation, the tribulation marks a profound period of hardship that spans seven years, divided into two phases, each lasting three and a half years. This era commences quietly but soon escalates into a series of devastating trials for humanity. Imagine a world where peace is but a distant memory, where wars ravage nations leaving despair in their wake. Famines grip the world next as food scarcity becomes rampant, affecting millions. Fields once lush and bountiful stand barren, as if nature itself has turned its back on humanity. These famines lead to widespread suffering, exacerbating the strife caused by wars. Amidst this, the planet is plagued by natural disasters, earthquakes that split the ground, tsunamis that engulf coastlines, and storms of unprecedented ferocity. Each calamity strikes a blow, weakening the resolve of nations and their people. As chaos mounts, so too does the hope for redemption grow. Seven seals, each unleashing a new layer of prophecy upon the world. In the apocalyptic narrative of Revelation, the breaking of the seven seals marks the commencement of profound events, each foretelling the complexities of the tribulation. The first seal introduces the white horse, whose rider, often interpreted as the Antichrist, brings false peace to deceive many. Following swiftly, the second seal reveals a red horse, symbolizing war and bloodshed that sweeps across nations. The third seal unveils a black horse, representing famine. Its rider holds a pair of scales, indicating the scarcity and rationing of food in the midst of crisis. Then comes the fourth seal, where a pale horse appears, its rider named Death, accompanied by Hades, spreading disease and further calamity. These four horsemen are harbingers of the initial woes set upon the earth, each intensifying the human experience of suffering and chaos. As the narrative progresses, the subsequent seals involve celestial disturbances and the ultimate sacrifice of martyrs who cry out for divine justice and retribution. With each seal broken, the world inches closer to its ultimate test. The armies of the world converge on a single battlefield known as Armageddon, this moment, steeped in prophecy, marks the crescendo of a cosmic struggle between the forces of good and evil. As the horizon fills with the amassed legions, the air thick with anticipation, 
one cannot help but reflect on the profound significance of this battle, foretold through the ages in the scriptures. Armageddon, derived from the Hebrew Har Megiddo, refers to the location that becomes the stage for this ultimate confrontation. The site, historically significant for numerous battles, once again finds itself at the heart of a divine reckoning. Here, the narrative of good versus evil reaches its peak, where prophetic visions suggest that the forces of darkness will rally against the light. This battle is not merely a clash of armies, but a pivotal moment in the divine plan, a fulcrum upon which the fate of the world balances. It is here that the threads of prophecy weave together, setting the stage for what is to come. Armageddon sets the stage for the final act in this divine drama. In the darkest hour, a light descends, the second coming of Christ. The scriptures foretell this monumental event with vivid imagery and profound symbolism. After the tumult of Armageddon, the sky parts, and from it, Christ returns, not as the carpenter's son, but as the king of kings, wielding justice and mercy. His arrival marks the culmination of earthly battles and the beginning of true peace. As prophesied, Jesus descends upon the Mount of Olives, his presence causing the mountain to split in two, creating a new valley from east to west. This dramatic entrance heralds the restoration of righteousness and the defeat of evil forces, including the deceptive Antichrist, who had led many astray. Christ's victory at Armageddon is absolute. He vanquishes foes with the breath of his mouth, establishing his kingdom on earth. This moment is pivotal, as it leads to the judgment of both the living and the dead. All souls, great and small, stand before the throne where deeds are weighed and eternal destinies are sealed. With the return of Christ, the world witnesses the dawn of a promised new era. A thousand years of peace, a millennium reign of Christ that reshapes the essence of existence. Imagine a world transformed where the lion lies down with the lamb and swords are beaten into plowshares. This is the millennium, a prophesied thousand-year period of unparalleled peace and righteousness under the direct leadership of Christ. During this era, the earth is restored to its Edenic glory, a reflection of heaven itself. Nature thrives, humanity flourishes under divine governance, and the scars of past conflicts and tribulations heal under the reign of peace. However, even in this near-perfect state, the story of humanity's struggle between good and evil finds its final chapter. At the close of the millennium, a last rebellion emerges as foretold. This ultimate insurrection, led by those still harboring the seeds of old malice, challenges the peace of the era, but is swiftly and decisively defeated. With this final act of defiance quelled, the narrative of human history moves towards its destined conclusion. As the final rebellion is quashed, the stage is set for the eternal state of the world. From the rise of darkness to a millennium of peace, the end times narrative challenges both the heart and the mind. In our journey through the biblical chronology of the end times, we've explored an array of pivotal events, beginning with the emergence of the Antichrist, a figure of profound deceit and power leading into the intense period of tribulation marked by trials and tribulations that test the very fabric of human resilience. The breaking of the seals further unveiled the unfolding divine justice, setting the stage for the epic battle of Armageddon a final showdown between the forces of good and evil. Following this cosmic clash, we witnessed the glorious second coming of Christ, heralding a new era of peace and righteousness during the millennium, a thousand years where Christ reigns, and the essence of divine morality is reflected in human governance. These events, rich in symbolism, are not merely historical forecasts, but are deeply imbued with lessons on faith, morality, and the resilience of the human spirit. They compel us to reflect on our own lives, our choices, and our paths. As we ponder these events, the true test remains in how we live today, in anticipation of what may come tomorrow.